Shalom, Yasharan. I'm going to start out by giving infinite honors to our Heavenly Father and our great King, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Harakar Kadash. Double honors to our inner apostles and inner bishops, a great millstone. A salutation to my fellow laborers in the Mashiach, Yahweh Shah, pushing his blood, true cross of four winds in this final hour, making their calling elections assured by a boundless labor love. Shalom on you, brothers. All right, uh, this topic, man, I'm going to just share some light on this, uh, this bugged out topic, all right? But we do videos like this because, you know, sometimes you got young brothers that are carried away with these uh, wayward doctrines and they hear things and they're carried away by their own lust. So the Lord has raised up his servants to shed light on some of the things these false prophets bring out, these greedy wolves bring out. And um, one, third, one thing I've heard over the years is... Uh, People, you know, carried away by their own lust. They come to the truth. They believe they're the Israelites. They believe we're the people of the book. But they, they, it's hard for them to put off that old man. So they try to incorporate things in the world that they don't want to give away. Uh, uh, cut off their flesh and try to assimilate it with this truth. And one thing is this smoking of cannabis and, and uh, not being able to kick that weed demon away. I've heard guys go so far over the years and say uh, that Moses and Aaron, the Levitical priest was burning weed in the temple, all right? And I'm going to tell you right now, that's the talk of bug outs. That's the talk of reprobates, degenerate reprobates. We talking about the lowest of the low, okay? And that's why I'm doing these scriptures. Don't you ever think that, that the Levitical priest, those holy men who the Lord taught them what they had to do in their office was, in the holy of holies and, and in the temple high as, high as rockets all right just bugged out of their mind while they're sacrificing and judging and doing all the things they had to do in the temple and they had bloodshot <laughs> red eyes how they fucking mind on cannabis man that, that's the talk of bug outs all right and i'm gonna show you where that shit started from. And that shit started from the Rastafarians, man, all right? That's where anybody that talks that shit, that's where they came from. Those are the ones that pushed at the Levitical priests. Well, you know what? I'm not just going to say the Rasta men because I've seen some so-called Jews say it too, all right? I've seen some of them so-called Jews uh, say that, that, that Moses and them was burning uh, ganja in the temple. But that's a lie. That's a fallacy. And those are men that take heed to it. Those are men that just don't want to stop smoking weed. They just can't kick the habit. Now, the Lord made the herbs of the earth for our enjoyment. All right. There is lawful ways that you can deal with the cannabis plant. You can make your um, tinctures. All right. You can make your teas. All right. It's, it's various ways that you can do it lawfully. But even when you deal with that lawfully, you got to do it in moderation. I'm not a big fan of, of, of guys doing it for recreational use, you know. Um, from my experience and what I've seen, it, the brothers that deal with those, uh, don't deal with that plant and do it in those lawful ways uh, and don't use moderation, it always fucks up their walk, all right? You can just clearly see their walk change, you know. The fire they had, the mental clarity they had, it, it, it don't be the same. That's my humble opinion, speaking as a man. All right? Um, so, to not veer off topic, anybody that thinks that, <laughs> to me, it's just, it's, it, you far left to think that. That's why you got to check yourself. All right? If you ever think that you have a seducing spirit on it, but this is what this sit down is going to be, be about. All right, those holy men, Aaron, his sons, Moses, those Levitical priests, man, none of them, Ezra, none of those brothers was uh, uh, in the temple bringing cannabis in the temple, burning it, putting it on, uh, putting it on, uh, what you call that thing, uh, what they burned the incense on, the censure, all right? They were, they weren't, they wasn't doing that. And we're going to prove it through the scriptures. All right. So I'm going to start off with this bug out right here. And funnel it through the scriptures. This is where this shit come from. I'm back at 
at verse, at verse 10 of chapter 1 of Luke. And the whole multitude of people were praying without. So without means outside of the temple. So all of the people were praying outside of the temple at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. So there we go again once more. The Aishas, the herb, the cannabis being shown to reveal the presence of angels as the burning bush did when it was before Moses. It revealed the presence of angels. So, so, so this should help us to understand our relationship, our heritage, which has returned to us sevenfold. What was taken from us, what was lost, what was lost through our descendants and the fall of man has returned sevenfold. We've been redeemed into the new name of his imperial majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie I, to live the life of full salvation. <laughs> the whole Bible, all of his blessings Ooh, and all God. of his appropriation. For we know the blessing of the cannabis. You see, we know the blessing of the cannabis. This, this, this is the talk of bug outs, man. Look at this guy, man. This guy is bugged out his fucking mind, man. This guy don't know if he's going or coming, man. All right? This guy got the Holy Scrolls in his hand. And he's pushing uh, that it was our culture, custom, and heritage to be at the temple, praying to the Lord, sacrificing to the Lord while we were high out of our fucking minds, man. All right? And if you, if you think that and you're an Israelite, all right, you're no different than this, this Rasta man, this Rastafarian man. Hala Salasi, the total bug out. All right, you and this guy have um something in common. Y'all believe the same thing. Y'all speaking the same thing. Okay? Which is that same herb used by Moses in the anointing of the temple. There we have it again, once more. The blessed herb used at all time within the temple. Within the temple. So when you enter in the temple, king priest, when you enter within the temple, burn your ashes. All this meditation, all this other stuff is really not needed, brethren. Enter within the temple. Submit wholly and humbly before the Lord our God, for he is one. All right, that's enough for this bug out. All right, now let's get to the Holy Scrolls. Let's, uh, you know what? I'm gonna start. I got a scripture in the ESV. I want to bring out first. This is uh, Wisdom of Solomon 4 and 12 in the ESV, English Standard Version. All right. Now, this is what goes on with men like that and men that uh, try to incorporate heathenistic customs into the scriptures. All right. This will be going on. All right. For the fascination of wickedness obscures what is good. You see, when you was in the world, smoke. I used to smoke. I smoked weed from what? I was tw from from fourteen. I was four I started smoking marijuana at fourteen. I came to the ministry when I was twenty nine. Okay, so from fourteen to twenty nine, I I blew the cannabis. All right, so I liked it. All right, but it was wicked. It was off. All right, so when you come to the truth, you got to put off that old man. Okay, all right. You used to we used to get the mid grade, the endo. Hydro, <laughs> uh, the perp, the cush. All right, we used to do all that shit. All right, smoking the bone, you know, smoking the banana leaf. All right, for you, uh, when we when we are uh, in the beginning, what did the Lord say that they both they that they now know they are like gods. They know what good and evil is now. You know, the Lord let us. Learn what 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 evil is. Uh, uh, Solomon said he put his mind to learn madness, wickedness too. You know what I'm saying? So, and, and it's all vanity, like Solomon said. But when we come to this ministry, we put off the new man and we put off those works of the flesh. But when you're fascinated with him and you can't let it go, it obscure 
what is good. And this thing of ours is good. But when you can't put off that old man, you try to come bring that to this good thing and it's not going to work out. Okay. You're going to have it. You're going to have issues and you're going to get exiled to be honest and roving desire. All right. And roving desire perverts the innocent mind. You see, see that guy mind through his lust. All right. Is, uh, doomed is is just de- twisted and demented all right you you you're he's representing so called call himself representing Yahweh by Shemuel Shai and talking about how Moses Aaron and our great king all of them were high out of their minds man defiling the temple okay this is what happens man when when you when you can't cut off that old man you you, you start or uh, the Lord turn you over to a reprobate mind, okay? You start believing things that aren't true. You say, I send them strong delusions where you'll believe a lie and to think that the men of the Lord, the men of old in the temple, that holy place, uh, burning cannabis, all right, and, op- and offering sacrifices and prayers to the Lord while they were high out of their mind, all right? That's what happens when you can't cut off the old man. You got to cut off the old man. You got to listen to the man that the Lord put before you. All right, this is the book of James, uh, chapter one, verse 13, okay? And it's written, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of Yahweh. For Yahweh cannot tempt evil, neither tempted he any man, all right? The only way you get tempted on the verse 14 is gonna tell you how you get tempted. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own own lust and enticed. You see, for you to think that those those unholy things is going on in the ho- the, the holy of holies, all right, is because you have that sensual desire for that cannabis bisatifa. All right, you don't want to kick it. You love when that smoke was going down your nostrils. All right, and you came here to the uh altar of your high by Shema with a great the men of great millstone teach sound doctrine and you knew you had to put it away all right but that shit never was cut off your flesh if you just hear one thing because this what happened this is what happened some time ago when elder apostle tahar uh said on the video that cannabis if you had an element and you smoked uh, cannabis that it was cool if you were sick. I mean, look, man, you could, if that's all it takes for you to go after all the years you've been in, go buy a fucking backwood, roll it up and smoke. All right, you just cancel away. He said, if you have a a a a, a ailment, so you so bugged out and you want to smoke, you go and buy one. What's your ailment? All right, because the elder apostle clearly said if you have an ailment. So you don't have an ailment, all right? It's because of your sensual desire, you always want to do it, okay? Secondly, you got to use, like Elder Gabar taught us, the beloved elder apostle Gabar taught us. He says some things in this ministry you got to learn to extrapolate. When you read the scripture, some things you got to extrapolate. Elder apostle Tohar is not going to tell us something for 40 years. Look, man, y'all niggas don't be smoking that weed, man. You smoke that weed, they look, you're not in this truth. All right, every brother know you you can't smoke weed and serve your high by Shema Shai. Okay? But you he say one thing in 40 years of saying something contrary to it, and that's all it takes for you to go out and do what he's been telling you 40 years not to do. You have to extrapolate what he said, okay? Because he's not gonna say something for 40 years and then one day say something totally contrary all right and then if he does that he's going to go more in depth than what he did that was just enough for somebody that hadn't killed that old man all right i used to like smoking weed you know what i'm saying i mean if oh shit the elder says it's legal all right nah the elder not gonna say something's legal and he's been saying the last 40 years is illegal okay so if he say something remotely close to it, you got a lot of extrapolating questions. You got a wormhole you got to go down to get the full understanding because he, he, the other apostle don't get down like that. And you had men go out there and just go left, okay? And this is why they did it. But every man is tempted 
when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. All right. You get the itching ears. Oh, I get to do what I was doing when I was in the world. All right. And that inner man or that old man comes back with a vengeance. OK, because you didn't never you never crucified his ass. OK. All right. And then you start believing things. Oh, man, they was blowing trees in the temple, man. We always walked around Israel, Israel, blowing trees. Nah, man, you off. You off. And if you go teach another man that also, his blood is going to be on your hands. Okay? Nah. That's not the customs, cultures of the Israelites, man. The lungs, is it wasn't made for water to get in them. When you get underwater and... Water in your lungs, what do your body do? It coughs. That's a defensive mechanism to expel the water out of your lungs. It's the same thing with smoke. When smoke gets in your lungs, you it coughs it out. It's a defense mechanism, okay? We want to walk around with black lips, you know what I'm saying? Uh, black mucus lungs, because whenever you look at the, when they do autopsies and you look at the smoke, the lungs of people that smoke cannabis, their lungs be black, full of smoke. Tar and shit, man. Nah, man. We were the most healthy people on earth. We the joy of the whole earth. We was the object of perfection. Okay? So, this is another thing. Now, let's get a little bit more thorough to show you that the high priests and all of the Levitical priests were not uh, high out of their minds, all right? So, I'm going to start down at Leviticus... Uh, 10 and I'm going to go to what's what is scripture at? bear with me I know it's here in 10 okay alright here we go I want verse 9 Leviticus 10 and 9 I'm going to start at 8 for edification's sake and Yahweh spake unto Aaron saying alright this is the Lord commandment his charge to all of the Levitical priests, do not drink wine nor strong drink, thou nor thy sons with thee. All right, all the Levitical priests, when thou go into the tabernacle, the congregation. Now, was it unlawful for the Levitical priests to drink? No, they all could drink. They could drink strong drink. They could drink wine. All right, when we did our um tithing, we gave them ten percent of our increase, so we'll give them ten percent of our vineyards, our wine, our strong drink. All right. And they were able to drink. But the Lord said they couldn't drink when they went to go work at the at the uh, temple. Why couldn't they drink when they went to the temple? Because they had to be of sober mind. They couldn't be in there drunk, woozy. All right. They used to have to do the work of the Lord, man. Keep it clean. Keep it holy. Undefiled. They used to have to judge it at the temple, man. All right. When you judge and you have to have a sound, clear mind, you can't have uh, be be inebriated. So if they couldn't drink strong drink and go to the temple or they it would have been defiled. You think they was walking around the fucking temple high out of their fucking minds. All right. Oh, man, I'm high as fuck, dude. I'm high as, I'm high as fuck, son. Ah, man, you, you, you. <laughs> that's that's the talk of bug outs. OK. Do not drink wine, nor strong drink, thou nor thy sons with thee, when thou go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. Okay? You go in the, in the temple of the Lord drunk, and the Lord going to fuck you up, man. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations. So if they couldn't go in there inebriated off of alcohol, you know they wasn't in there inebriated off of uh, the fumes that come from cannabis and then you gotta understand no, all of those odors that they had uh, burning in the temple alright that shit would come to the outer court that smoke would come to the outer court alright cause that smoke represented the prayer of the, of, the, of the people so that mean that fragrance would hit the people and the people would smell that shit then that mean they would be getting high everybody just out there high as a rocket man that's the talk of bug outs man alright that's the talk of men carried away from their own carnal, sensual desires and trying to incorporate that madness in this holy thing of ours. Okay? Now, I'm about to go back up to verse 1 to show something that happened. All right? This is Leviticus 10 and 1. And Nadab and Abuhu 
the sons of Aaron took either of them his censer and put fire there. You see, that's what they used to put the incense in, in the censer, and put and, and put fire therein, and put incense thereon, and offer strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. All right. Now we're gonna see what that strange fire is, all right. The Lord gave them exactly what they needed to uh gave them the instructions on what was supposed to be put on those centers to burn, all right, and offer ovulation to him. Okay. And we're gonna see was it marijuana, cannabis of sativa, Okay. So he gave them things that that they purify, that they 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 deem holy, sanctify. All right, and he said, this is exactly what you put on that censure, okay? So this is the book of Exodus, chapter 30, and I'm going to start at verse 34, okay? You know what? Do I want to get there first? No. Before I get that, I'm going to get something else. I'm going to get something else. All right. I want to, I want to show uh, through the spirit. This is why we burnt the incense. All right. This is why we did. This is why we did what we do. Let me get this and then I'm going to show what they all put on it. You know what? Forget it. I'm going to do it. All right. I'm going to do it. I already started. Okay. This is uh, Exodus 30. And 34, I already started, so I might as well do it. This is Exodus 30 and 30 and 34, all right? Here we go. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take unto thee sweet spices, Stacti, and Anchia, Anchia, and Gabalum. These sweet spices put pure frankincense, of each shall be a light weight, and thou shalt make it a perfume, a confection. And the art of, of the apothecary, tempered together, pure and holy. All right. So if you put anything on it that he told you don't put, that would make you strange. Okay. And thou shalt beat some of them very small. That's how we had them stones. When we get them frankincense, you know, they have been beat very small, very small. And we make the resin. Okay. And put it out, put it off. So like it, and put off it before the testimony of the tabernacle of the congregation where I will meet with thee and it shall be unto you most holy. And as for the perfume which thou shalt make, you shall not make to yourselves according to the composition thereof. It shall be unto thee holy for the Lord. And I, now listen, he just told them what to put on their censure so it could burn. All right. It didn't say nothing about cannabis, this It said nothing remotely close to that. Okay, so that that just exiles what uh, these bug outs say. They're not gonna find one scripture to say that show no, in all of the holy scrolls that the men were burning uh, that marijuana, as the old people say, uh, in the holy temple. All right, this is another precept to bag that up. This is the book of Sirach, uh, chapter 24, verse 15, all right? And it's written, I gave a sweet smell like cinnamon and a polythus, and I yielded a pleasant odor like the best myrrh as gabalin and onyx and sweet storax as the fume of frankincense in the tabernacle. Okay? So the Lord showed you those holy herbs, okay, those holy resins that was burning, those sweet-smelling odors that was in the temple, all right? You're not going to find nothing in there that say cannabis. Cannabis is just something a man conjure up in his mind because he like getting high, all right? If you like getting high, and that, that's your thing, man. Just say that, but don't try to say that's what the men of the law were doing. Don't say that that's what they was doing in the Holy of Holies. They had, you walk in there and you, you, you walk in sober and you come back out with a contact high as a fucking rocket, okay? That's the talk of bug outs, man. That's, that's the talk of, of, of corrupted men. 
men whose minds are defiled, degenerate thinking men. Okay. All right. And those, those, and, and the reason we burnt all of those incense, uh, let me, let me go there. Matter of fact, I'm going to go there. This is what the guy was bringing out. The reason the Lord had us to do these things, because what did our great king say? He said, my father's house will be a house of prayer. All right. And no, the smoke of those incense represents the prayer of the, of the saints. Okay. This is Luke chapter one, verse 10. And it's written. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. See, during the time of incense, you went there and you prayed. When you um, read the scriptures, they got hours of prayer. I think the first one was at 9, 12. The second one was at 12. Don't quote me on it. You had hours of prayer. You remember in the preset where it say John and Peter went to the house of the Lord at the house of hour of prayer. All right. So you had hours where the nation Israel would go to the temple and pray. Like that's what, uh, uh, what was her name? Uh, Samson, uh, Samuel mothers. When all those women would go to the temple and pray to the Lord that they get pregnant and stuff. All right. You, we had hours of prayer that you went to the temple. Don't quote me on it. This is me speaking as a man. I think the first hour of prayer was nine. The second was 12. And the last one was three. Okay. So they had three hours of, you know, when you went to the prayer, the temple three times to pray throughout the day. The temple was the center. The temple was the center place of life in the Israelite community. Like in, in East House Center Society, the center place of, of life here in, in America has to do with money, business and commerce. All right. Downtown in every city, that's where all the money and the business is generated. When, when, when you go downtown, that's where they got the, the court system. All right. And, and, and where the governor's house normally is. All right. His his society is geared around money and his government system. And the Israelite in our uh, culture, the center of life was the temple. Like when the, when the enemy would come in and besiege us, we wouldn't care if he, the enemy tore down our houses. We all would go to the temple and defend the te def defend the temple. All right, we could rebuild houses and stuff, but we want to defend the temple unto death. Okay, so when you read this, Luke one and ten, and the whole multitude of the people were praying without the time of incense. Okay, and the time of incense, y'all right, you you would have to wait to one of the priests go and light those incense, and then everybody would come in the outer court, and everybody would be lifting up praising Yahweh Shemel Shai and lifting up their prayers to the Lord. Let me get another precept to bag that up so we wouldn't be burning no fucking cannabis and, and all of that smoke that aroma hits the congregation now everybody high and then the angel then look what happened this is what these niggas said let me go back to that so then everybody get fucking high <laughs> this is bugged out shit check this shit out not calling the scriptures there but check this out so like you if I said that all right Luke 1 and 10 and the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. <laughs> and there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. <laughs> oh, shit. So, they, so you let them tell it. You let them tell it. We was high off the incense and then a great angel appeared. Because our consciousness and our third eye got opened and voila, angel appears. Man, it's bugged out, man. It's, it's bugged out. Nah, man, but what, what during the angel appeared during those times when, when Israel besought the Lord with one heart and we it's sincere. All right, the, we would go pray, we'll burn the incense up and, and let me show you. Let me bag that up. Uh this is Revelation 8 and 3. And this is what those incense represent. And the angel came and stood at the altar because the angels are the ones that bring our prayers to the Lord, okay? Having a golden censer, all right? And this is what you read Ezekiel, the 30th chapter, all right? You got to understand that that physical temple, 
that the Lord gave the instruction to Moses and King David and Solomon to create, all right? It emulates that was in the heavens, okay? As it is in heaven, let it be on earth, okay? And the angel and another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which come with the prayers of the saints ascended up before the power before Yahweh out of the angel's hand. You see? So that's why we had the time of incense. We would go before the Yahweh Bashem Shai and offer up our prayers. And that's what our great king said. All right? You made my father's house a den, uh, a den of thieves, but this is supposed to be a house of prayer. Okay? A house of prayer. And when we pray before the Lord, man, we go to the Lord. Uh, it got a scripture in the Apocrypha to say, before you come pray to the Lord, prepare thyself. All right? We don't go before the Lord drunk or high. All right, we go to the Lord with sincere heart and fear and trembling, making sure we, our mind are right before we go to him with our requests and, 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 and without us paying homage to him, man. We're not going to him like a drunk fellow, hide our mind, all right? It's serious business when you pray to the Lord, okay? This is our uh, second Chronicles, all right, to bag that up. Second Chronicles 13 and 11, and it's written, and they burnt unto the Lord every morning and every, and every morning and evening burnt sacrifice and sweet incense. See, this was the center of life for the Israelites, man. We was doing this sober, all right? We was doing this sober. All right. And, and when we go, when we go burn sacrifices, we, we go ask the Lord to forgive us of our sins or we'll go burn sacrifices to thank him for things that we he's done for us. All right. And we'll go pray to him. Now, those incense was uh, like our prayers. Uh, it was a symbolic of our prayers going up to the Lord. OK, the shoe bread also set they in order upon the pure table, the candlestick of gold with the lamps thereof to burn every evening. For we keep the charge of the Lord, our power, but you have forsaken him. You see? And we would do this two, three times a day, man. All right? This is what we would do, man. Okay? So when you, in this thing of ours, man, you don't incorporate all of these uh, wild-ass philosophies with the Lord, man. The Lord will deal with you for doing that. All right? All right? This is our uh, second Peter. And this is what a lot of men do. All right? Second Peter 2 and 1. Get that shit out of your mind, man. And then for the brothers that do deal with the cannabis in the lawful ways, man, do it in moderation. If you're doing something every day, it's not moderate. Now, I understand, like, you drink wine, you know, some like in the Italian culture, you drink wine with every meal, or, you know, but just drinking tequila every fucking day, man, every fucking day is not moderation, man. That's a strong drink. Your body build up a tolerance, you're going to drink more and more and more. All right? Wine is a mocker, man, if you don't drink it in moderation. man, You're going to start going off eventually, man. All right? You don't drink just a, a, a pint of tequila every day, just every fucking day. Yes, the Lord said, give them strong drink that's ready to perish, man. I mean, come on. Hey, you, gotta, you don't take that to the limit. All right? If you're going to Make you a tonic, a, a cannabis tonic, a cannabis tincture, or edible, man. You don't do it every day. All right? Your walk is going to change. It's not going to be the same. All right? When created to do it, moderation. Moderation is not every day. Okay? Second Peter 2 and 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring up on themselves swift destruction. So if you're thinking these things and then you're going to tell it to another man also, all right, you're going to get yourself killed. All right, get that shit out your mind, man. Don't even repeat that shit, man. That's, that's the talk of bug out. That's the talk of reprobates. It's not lawful. And when we do say things, we always got to have scriptures 
to bring out, bag up anything that we bring forth, okay? If you can't bring forth a scripture to bring it out, to bag up what you're saying, that should let you know it's off, okay? All right, this is 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust. You see, and that's what that's what it boils down to. People want to satisfy their sensual, carnal desires, all right? And to do that, they'll corrupt the doctrine, all right? It's, that's what happens. All right, those Rastafarians, they say they believe we the Israelites, we are the tribe of Judah. All right, but they don't want to stop smoking weed. Hell, that's how I say it. I smoke weed, you know? You got guys like that that know they're Israelites. They do the same thing. That's not even Rastafarians. All right, I, I got a guy down here I grew up with, went to elementary school together. Uh, I introduced him to this, 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 this thing of ours, and he, and he received it. To this day, you receive. All right. This happened to me a couple of times. I got a brother, uh, Kaya, always tell me, hey, I, everybody, you bring around a, a, a get his doctrine to, brother. They always seem to be bugged out. I, he's like, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? You always bring it in that strange fruit. We laugh about it, but I'm like, look, I I heard El Apostle the Heart say, man, this thing is a revolving door. You say, men come and go. <laughs> just how men come in, that's how men go out. And I've seen that in my little short tenure in this thing of ours. But back to this guy, all right? We went to elementary school together. We knew each other basically our whole lives, all right? So I gave him the truth. I supped with him, and he, uh, he received it. So he's on the internet, and that's what your younger brothers got to do. Stop looking at these other camps. He's on the internet. And you know it happens to young brothers you, when you see where there is a light, you start looking at anybody that calls itself an Israelite. He bumps into somebody that teaches it's okay to smoke weed. All right. So the next thing I know, he, me and him get into it. He pulling me up talking about, oh, weed is of the it's a herb. When the Lord created the herbs, everything he said it was good. Who are we to say we can't smoke? And you see, he didn't really, he never really wanted to give up smoking. He's completely bugged out now. I, I looked at his page one day. All he do is post scriptures. He posts Deuteronomy 28. He say we the Israelites. You know, he whole, he wholeheartedly believe he's Israelite, but he's bugged out. He got cannabis plants all over his page. He's bugged out, all right? A false prophet, he, he heard a false prophet teach, and he was carried away with itching ears, and he's bugged out. There's nothing, nothing can be done for him unless the Lord have mercy on him, all right? And that's just, this is the things that happen when you don't get your lust in check, okay? You have to ex you have to execute that old man. You have to destroy him utterly. Paul say, I beat I beat my body in a subjection, all right? And the only way you do that is through the spirit, man. You got to dwell within the light daily, okay? 2 Timothy 4 and 3, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust, shall they heap unto themselves teacher having engineers. And that's what happened to my partner. You know, he he, he got he had itching ears and came across the path of a, of, of a false prophet. Now he said he, he calls on Yahweh by Shema with a blood in his hand. He's reading the Bible with, with uh, studying the scriptures with, with, with the right hand. He's turning the page with the left hand. He got a, a backwood smoking, man bugged out his fucking mind and, he, and they're going to bring onto their self swift destruction all right we're about to see all these guys teaching these heresies these damnable heresies man the law about to knock them off man okay they're damnable heresies man T talking about the temple of the lord was full of cannabis on the session on, on the incense censure and 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 Whenever the Levitical priest walked in, all of them was how they came out. You know, that's a strong herb, that, 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 that marijuana herb. When you're around it and it get in your clothes, man, that should be strong. A person could be in the car smoking. When they walk past you, they could light up a whole room, man. So you got to li listen to the gravity of what you're saying. If that's bur the burning temple, those incense and stuff was burning. It was, Levit it was a 24-hour thing, the Levitical priest. Uh, were burning incense uh, around the clock. 
So they're around that every day. Just imagine how that smoke would be in their clothes. And when they walk by, they just smell like a ton of cannabis. Man, that's some bugged out shit. All right. Now, when you're around those sweet smelling odors, frankincense, myrrh, gabalin, all those things, and you walk by, man, you're gonna, it's going to be a sweet odor, a sweet savor. All right. Uh, marijuana, you know, I like the smell of it. I like the fragrance, but it's still like a little. It's like a little funk smell to it, though. It's, it's not a sweet smell, okay? It, 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 it is a little strange odor, you know? Now, I've smelled, I smell it. It's not a horrible, horrendous odor. The uh, exotic uh, strands, I'll say that. But, man, the holy men wasn't doing that. That shit is off. That shit is off, man. It's totally fucking off. Smoke in your lungs is off, all right? That's not what we did. When you inhale, Frank was saying, you walking around and you smelling those things, you do not get high. If you're in, if cannabis is burning around you and you inhale it, you're going to get high. All right? That shit is off. All right? And only the simple when simple men are carried away from those type of teach, teachings. This is uh, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 15. And it says, it says, the simple believe every word, but the prudent man look well in his goings. Elder Apostle Tahar, when he said that, simple men just took it and run with it, but the prudent man was like, nah, man, he's not going to be saying this all these years, and then one day tell us something just totally contrary to what he's been saying the last 40 years. Now nah, we got to look well into this thing. Come on, let's, let's ask some questions. Let's go down this wormhole. When he said I had me scratching my fucking head, I was like, whoa, Elder Apostle, what, 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 what are you saying? That didn't make me want to go run and smoke a fucking blunt. I, mean, I was like, man, nah, he ain't been saying this. Let's see what's going on. Let me ask some questions. You know, that's what prudent men do, all right? But if you had that sensual desire already in you, you know what I'm saying? And you just, all you need is just a little nudge. Next thing you know, you know, you all the way out here. And it happens. All right. So with that, man, I don't want to write this out. This was edifying to the hearers. I want to get infinite honors to our heavenly father and our great king. Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai by Shem, Hira Karkadash, double honors to our elder apostles and elder bishops, a great millstone, a salutation to my fellow laborers in the Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, pushes his beloved true cross of four winds. Kwame Yasharala, Bible Bar.